Thanks for tuning in to The Real Deal Show, brought to you by ebodyboarding.com and Tribe Boards. Hey folks, Jay Real, another episode of The Real Deal Show, and I started our Meet the Staff series uh, last week with Tommy, and sitting next to me now is another member of our staff, the enigmatic, wonderful, and mysterious... <laughs> Gianna Simonelli. Welcome. Adjectives. It is a lot. You have a lot to live up to. Welcome, Gianna. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Right on. So, Gianna uh, has been here at eBodyboarding since uh, 2000. 2020. 20. Right. So, about a year and a half as we record this just before Christmas 2021. Gianna, before we get into your story as it relates to bodyboarding. <laughs> Let's talk about what you do here. Can you tell us what you do here at ebodyboarding.com? So um, I'm the second one who gets here in the morning. Josh is always first. You can't beat him. He is up at the crack of dawn. So I get here second, being that I'm a mom. And uh, I start with my emails. I make sure all the customer service stuff is answered. All the orders that need editing are done in the morning before they get printed and shipped out. Um, call any of you guys that need calling for any leash installs, stuff like that, customer service issues. Um, I make all of the money add up, which is pretty important. Yep. Um, I make sure all the money equals what's coming in and what's going out as well. So um, a lot of the money is on me, yeah. which is uh, <laughs> that, so, you know, that can be good. It's uh well like it's, if just, you were it's a, just a little stressful. If you were a stripper, having money on you could be a good thing, right? Well, I'd only need to count singles. But then. you're not a stripper. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Boy, we've gone way off the rails here. Wow. But yes, yeah, so Gianna, you have a multifaceted position here and you help customers when they come in as well. Yes, I do that. So really a little bit of everything, right? Yep, that was um, literally the job description that you guys gave me when you hired me was, <laughs> yeah, we can have you do this, but you gotta kind of be able to do everything and that's not a problem for me. I'm definitely a Jill of all trades and a master of none. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I don't know about that, but you also help us unload trucks. Yeah, yeah, containers, we gotta do, everybody's gotta pitch in for that. Yeah, so it really, is a multifaceted position you do a valued a valued service here at ebodyboarding and you know we mentioned with tommy last week we love how great you guys are with the customers you guys are we're all bodyboarders here you just to get straight into the origin story talk about your born and raised where were you born and raised i was born at laguna beach hospital um i am still alive so it did all work out um <laughs> Uh, so I was born there. I was raised in San Clemente pretty much most of my life. I got into bodyboarding at a pretty young age. Um, I grew up down at the hole at San Clemente um, with the other grommets learning yeah. how to surf. Um, and uh, Jimbo Gaskin was the one who um, actually taught me how to surf. And he noticed that every time it was my turn to get off the board and somebody else's turn to get pushed into the waves, he, I would just get back on the boogie board. And um, Jimbo being the amazing human being that he is, he said, uh, Johnny, you really like being on the boogie board, huh? And I said, yeah, yeah, I like this. And he's like, well, then you should just do that. <laughs> so shout out to Jimbo. I know Jimbo as well. He was a great surfer back in his younger days. I'm sure he still Legend. is, but still is. he was a competitive uh, powerhouse back in the 80s, mm -hmm. as I recall. Um, so he had a big influence on you kind of getting into bodyboarding. Is that it? You were just hanging out at he the beach? He did. Yeah, he did have. I mean, I was always kind of pulled towards it. Um, I, I always loved doing it, but he definitely had kind of more of the, um, uh, you know, perspective on the sport as opposed to I was eight years old. I had zero perspective. Yeah. Um, so he had a little bit more perspective on the sport to be able to be like, well, Johnny, you just got to get yourself a pair of fins and get out there and you're good to go. Right. So now you, your family, you have brothers i have two younger brothers and um mom and dad mom and dad no one's into surfing or bodyboarding dad was a surfer okay um, dad was a surfer um my other brother tony was also into bodyboarding and my little brother was too um and then my middle brother tony got really into it after i was kind of how he had my oh i'm into this and no i'm not so much into this period <laughs> um so he got really into it and then i 
after I got divorced, moved and came back to San Clemente, got way back into it again. Yeah. Got kind of like a re re-engaged into it, remembered how much fun I had when I was a kid and just kind of wanted to relive, like so many of our customers wanted to relive yeah. those moments. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because, you know, at one point you just kind of showed up at T Street and you were there every single day. This is a long time ago. And Vicky and I would see you out there and we go, we haven't seen this girl out here. And all of a sudden she's here every day and she like knows everyone. What's yeah. the story? So you yeah. came back, you had moved away for a short time mm -hmm. up the coast a little bit. And then you came back. What reignited your stoke on bodyboarding? Well, I had, uh, you know, I just uh, just got divorced. Um, I was a single mom at that point. I was still a very young mom. Luke was only maybe one year old. Yeah. So I was still kind of at that period for a lot of young parents where they're like kind of losing their identity to parenting. Oh, yeah. Like you didn't have a thing. Right. I definitely didn't have a thing because I had just come off of being a wife and a mom yeah. full time. So it was like, okay, now there's no husband in the picture. So it's really just like I have all this time to invest in myself. It's like, okay, well, yeah. if I had something that I could just keep doing and I kept doing it and I never stopped, what would be the thing? And I mean, bodyboarding was always something that I just loved. It was the only thing that made me feel like uh, you're doing this and you're fine at it. <laughs> you're yeah. fine. You don't need to worry. <laughs> no, no, I get that. Yeah. So... Well, that's cool because, you know, when you're coming off of, you, as you mentioned, you're coming off a divorce, you're a new mom, it's good to almost have like an escape, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely what it life. was. That is definitely, I like, I needed a thing. I needed something to lean on, something that was going to give me like structure and keep pushing me forward and make me yeah. better myself as a person. And bodyboarding just happened to be that thing that was really, really good for me and my self-esteem and, you know kind of reinventing myself and, a little bit. And you clear your head when you're out in Absolutely. the water, right? Yeah, so you don't think about We all anything. know that. Yeah, I mean, it's like church. Yeah, it really is. You know, I've mentioned this in past shows where, you know, going in the water is a cleanser, really, because you're away from phones, computers, your, your stresses on land stay on land, and you get out there and you forget about all that for that brief time you're in the water. But it's therapeutic right 100%. you get out of the water you feel great yeah 100 so, percent. i definitely yeah. agree with that that's, and that's that's the cool thing about having you and tommy and josh here and of course vicky is that we all have that same you know that same spirit we get the same benefit out of, out of bodyboarding um just to touch a little sidebar here your name is Gianna. Spell it for us. G-I-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. It's not Gina. It's not Joanna. It's not Donna. Donna. It's <laughs> this is these are things that people say when they when she picks up the phone because you'll say what when somebody calls you pick up the phone what do you say here? Well, if I say Gianna, everyone's gonna butcher it. So there's just no there's no chance there. So I've just given up on saying my name correctly, and I just say Jonna. And they think you're saying Donna or most Gina. So, yeah, she gets the most incorrect. I get some Rays and some Jakes because I'll say, hey, Jason. e bodyboarding, this is Jay. And they'll say Jake or Ray or whatever, Jason. Yeah, but you get more incorrect uh, uh, calls on your name, I think, than anybody else. Yeah. So. Well, I, I've <laughs> so been now you know. That. And, and that dovetails into my next question. Do you want to promote your Instagram page? Because now's your chance. Oh, yeah, sure. So if anybody wants to give me a follow on my Instagram page, it's my name, G-I-A-N-N-O-L-O-G-Y. That's Johnology. Okay. How did you come up with that one? Do you have a story behind that? No, it's just the study of me. It's completely narcissistic. And she <laughs> pr produces content on there literally every day. Some of it related to bodyboarding, some of it related to her life as a single mom. And it's uh, it's pretty compelling if you guys want to give her a follow. There's some pretty <laughs> funny stuff, interesting. Every strange. once in a while, the blender explodes. And yeah. <laughs> but it goes there. all over the house. So. She wears her life on her sleeve, as it were, on the, uh, on the Instagram. So, you get the raw. Yes. So we are here in San Clemente. Obviously... You know, T Street is our local spot. You are a fixture out there, T Street. What What is it about T Street 
that you like the most? Because you're there a lot. That's your spot. It's a terrible wave. It's the worst wave in the world. So in other words, <laughs> she doesn't want anyone else coming there. No, no, no. It's not a bodyboard <laughs> wave. I think um, I, the way I was always raised by the other bodyboarders at T Street was if you can ride T Street, you can ride anywhere because T Street's terrible. It doesn't generate speed. You have to generate your own speed. So it's, it's just got a lot of those little things in teaching you how to ride that you maybe wouldn't pick up if you were riding a really fast break that barreled all the time. You were riding a good break. You wouldn't pick up these fine-tuned little um, techniques on how to uh, generate speed, on how to manage your speed and stuff like that. So it's it's been a it's been a really good spot to train at, I'd say. I think that's a valid point because we've seen in the surfing world a slew of top level surfers have come out of T Street mm -hmm. over the years. You know, all the way back, I think about the, you know, going back to the 80s when I moved to California, you had Matt Archbold and Dino Andino, Jim Hogan, Mike oh. Parsons, and then, you know, current guys like uh, uh, um, Griffin, Pinto. yeah, Griffin Colapinto and, and um, Kolohe Andino, and just, I mean, the list goes on and on they all kind of were born and bred surfing T Street. And the reasons that you mentioned, I think, are a big part of their success. They, they learn on a wave that's not exactly the easiest to surf. Mm -hmm. It takes, you know, very good skills of observation to, to find little power pockets out there. And that sets them up to have success on almost any kind of wave right. that they may want to surf or encounter maybe on the world tour, of course. So, um, so getting back into that, so bodyboarding at T Street sets you up for bodyboarding other places. Tell me about, let's pick one of your favorite surf trips that you've ever been on. Where Do you have one? I mean, you've been I mean, on a couple recently. Yeah, you went to I mean, Hawaii, you went to yeah, I'd, BSR. I'd say that, yeah, BSR and Hawaii are definitely me top. I also love um, some the Mexico trip that we used to take when things were all super good. Yeah, um, but pre-COVID. I would say that, I would say that, that T Street has really prepared me for a lot of waves that I've ridden, Baja being one of them. Yeah. That wave moves a lot like T Street does in certain sections. Um, I recently rode this spot in uh, in Hawaii on the South Shore called uh, Irma's. Mm -hmm. It was not like a really firing when we were there or anything like that. But So it was just a regular kind of, not even I would say swell. It was just like, oh, this is just regular... Just whatever coming basic, through basic average day average day and um there were there were i remember when i first paddled up the first wave like the first set that came and i was paddling out and we went up it and the ver wave was so vertical i was like oh my gosh i'm finally in hawaii <laughs> um because you know you had to go through it you couldn't just go over and you get pitched over so sure, yeah I, I remember that was the moment where i was like i'm on a real hawaiian wave right now that's what's happening. Yeah. And uh, and when I took off on the first one and you just, you go down the line and it, it stands up the way they do compared to our waves, which don't stand up, they mush. <laughs> um, yeah. When you see, when you're looking down the line and you're, you're setting your line for it and you're looking at how it's just standing up, it's like your brain just kicks in and you already know because it's not gonna go slow. So you know how fast you have to go. And it, it's not a big deal because you're like, oh yeah, this is no problem. Yeah. Because I know I can go that fast on a wave that's moving and standing up. Right. I don't know that I can do that at T Street all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so the Hawaii trip had a big impact it on did, you. It did. It okay. did. I'd say that I, I got to ride a lot of waves and I met a lot of people that you know were were pretty epic. That whole Sandy's crew that's yeah. there. That, and they just took it. you guys in. You totally. Guys totally. Stood right in there. Yeah. Totally. They. Uh, you know. Uh, Tom Prince's. Uh, had a little bit of clout there and yep. it didn't hurt. <laughs> yep. And you were traveling over there with Tom. So um, he knows a lot of people from back in the day and yep. smoothed that path over for you. So that trip was great. Let me ask you, do you have a fantasy surf trip any place in the world? Let's say, and I'm not telling you, I'm going to give you a surf trip anywhere in the world. So don't <laughs> misconstrue <laughs> <laughs> so next year's but if you bonus, yeah let's say you won the lottery and you could go anywhere you wanted on a surf trip where would it be do you have a destination in mind i i i think i think i'd really want to go to that trip that you guys do in fiji i think uh, that'd definitely be one of them i mean it's hard to it's hard now that i've been to bsr with you guys honestly to to want to go on another surf trip because now i see the whole oh but yeah but you could just not get waves 
Right. Whereas, right. like, when you go to BSR, you for sure are going to get it's waves. Guaranteed. There's no, there's no problem. It's guaranteed, and you're probably going to catch way more than you would have caught on a surf trip that did have swell. Because yep. you would have had to go get lunch. You would have had to leave. You would have had to go places. So I mean, True. and do other things. So uh, BSR is probably hands down one of the best surf trips I've been on as far as wave quality and quantity. Yes, and you know, you teed this up for me, so I'm gonna take the ball and run with it and say that we do have space available on the Texas Tube Tour 2022. We're doing two dates, one in May, Memorial Day weekend, and another date in uh, early October. You just go to our website, go to the bottom where it says bodyboarding travel, and you click the link, all the details are there, including a link to pay a deposit if you're interested in going. But like Gianna said, that indeed is a guarantee. You're going to go to the place for two days and every single person's going to get the same amount of waves. You are guaranteed to get barreled if you have the skill to get barreled because every wave's going to be barreling. So um, even if nobody, you don't have the skill to get barreled, yeah, you, still get you pretty barreled. much whether you want to or not. And, and you know, it's, it's one of those trips where you're not going to, your buddy's not going to score epic waves in a session and maybe you didn't get good ones in that session and you come in bummed out everyone gets good waves right so it's it's a given so off of the uh off of the texas tube tour and right into the fiji one we still get a couple spots left on that one as well details again on that bodyboarding travel page so um so yeah so there's the fantasy surf trip for jana we'll see maybe someday <laughs> we can see you on the, on the uh, yeah, on the Tavi Tube Tour, as we call that one. So let me ask you any bodyboarding um, goals that you have. I know you've been doing an odd contest here and there. You did the Bodyboarding U.S. Festival mm -hmm. down OB, and you also got to sit in as you were basically kind of the interviewer. You interviewed everybody. Yeah, I was doing post-heat interviews. It was really fun. I would thank you, Bodyboarding US, again for that opportunity because that was really cool and fun thing to do, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So, I mean, that was a, I was that was just a random thing that I was asked to do, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you know you're very articulate. You have a good level of energy, which is exactly what you need for that kind of gig. And you did a great job Thank at you. it. Thank was you. was it distracting from your competitive juices? Because you competed there too. Did it distract you at all, or was it fine? You know, I feel like that was one of I did terrible in that contest. I got very last place, but I think I was I felt really good about about it. I think it was kind of like a consolation prize a little bit because yeah. it was like even though I didn't do well in the contest, it was like, okay, you still have work to do. So sure. it kept me it kept me focused. I didn't bum out for you know like. Ugh. Right. You know, it was, um, it was, it, cause I just had to get back into, all right, you got to turn it on. You got to keep it positive and you got to make it happen. So, I mean, yep. I think it was good. It was almost therapeutic, I'd say. So that was a contest. Do you have competitive aspirations moving forward? Is that important to you or you just kind of do it for I fun? I just do it for fun. I just like to, I just love to compete, honestly. I'm, yeah. I have a competitive spirit. I mean, it's a good thing that me and Tom hang out so much, me and yeah. Tom Prince, because he's equally competitive. So, you know, we race to the kindred spirits. We race, race to, the to the refrigerator. We race to the refrigerator. To get the last race to the, beer. Get the last beer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we sometimes we race to Hoppa Jays. We, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's how many, uh, I can get more waves than you in this session. So it's, um, <laughs> it's the kindred spirit yeah, you of are. Competitive, you're, competitiveness. But yeah, I just I just love competing. I mean, if I can turn anything into a contest. So. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. You, your son, Luke, is how old now? He's six. Are you going to pass that comp competitive edge on to him? Oh my God, he's so annoyingly competitive already. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you to the stairs. Oh, I beat you to the door. Man, it's well, on. that's fine, dude. You don't have the keys. You can't open it anyway. Oh, uh, he'll or figure that one out soon enough. This morning, I, he's like, oh, you're putting your boots on. I guess you're not going to win the putting your shoes on competition. <laughs> now, he's been bodyboarding too, right? A little bit. He hasn't really caught the bug or anything like that. It's it's just little, uh, he's at that age where it's just little windows that you get of, sure. of them doing fun, cool stuff that you're into. Now, are you trying to steer him into bodyboarding or no, any other sport? No, I want him sport? to do whatever he wants to do. I mean, I definitely want him in water sports. Some yeah. kind of, I don't care if it's water polo. I don't care if it's swimming, you know. like yeah. I definitely, I think he's he has an affinity for the water and he loves it so yep. keep him keep him in the water sort of thing whatever right. he wants to do is fine like mother like son the affinity for the water we love that 
Um, so, Gianna, anything else you want to, any shout outs you want to give, any kudos you want to give out here? Yeah, let me say um, thank you. Shout out to Snot Nose, who um, is one of my sponsors. And um, Wahine Action, because they're always super supportive of me. They're not my sponsor or anything, but um, they all, oh, you're wonderful. I love you. Um, other than that, uh, thank you everybody who's supported me on the bodyboarding journey up until this point, um, I mean, including you and Vicky, you guys have been probably some of my biggest supporters. Um, so yeah, just thanks everybody who's, you know, with me and not against me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So that's uh, Gianna Simonelli. Please give her a follow on Instagram. She mentioned her Instagram handle is Genology, and uh, that's G I A. N N O L O G Y. Give her a follow on Instagram. Pretty interesting content she puts out. I promise you won't be bored. You won't. Be, <laughs> you won't be bored. It will make your day. So, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Real Deal Show. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, if you're following us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notification when the next episode drops or we launch some more how-to. Uh, videos. Also give us the thumbs up, throw some comments in down below, folks. And if you're listening on the audio podcast, hope you enjoyed the listen. And we will see you next time. And as always, we will see you in the surf.